they come up during their laws and those that have illnesses is probably going to ask for your healing power to be upon them. Giving them peace and comfort as well. Um, may everything we do and say tonight are in you and benefit the citizens of heart and pray the same to your name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so if not here, we'll jump right into old business. Um, I had her put on here the sidewalk project. I just, uh, I need some discussion about the sidewalk project, about, I wasn't <coughs> sure when we left last time just exactly where we were. I think we talked about just doing piecemeal just here and there. Um, one of the things I would like to make everybody aware of is that, you know, we have a grant and that grant is, uh, you know, for $680,000 or thereabouts. Uh, it costs us $115,000 to get $680,000 worth of work in the city. If we turn that grant back, it will diminish our viability for the next grant that we would try to apply for. Okay. It'll hurt some, to some degree. Um, and I just want us all to be aware of that. You know, uh, I'll do whatever you all decide that you want to do, but uh, you know, I wanted to make sure that we we're all on the same page, understand the repercussions and everything of, of this, that possible decision if we decide to turn it back. Does, it, does the, you know, I want to make it clear, I mean, I, I don't want to lose $680,000 worth of grant money. I mean, you can't get that type of return if we put in 115000 Is that partly in kind also work? It is. So no, it's not this. No, no, the in kind is over and above. Uh, over above the hundred fifteen thousand. So in other words, we have to put a hundred fifteen thousand dollars for the real money in. Right. But still, yet you do the math. You're not going to get that right for return anywhere else to put in to get six hundred eighty thousand dollars to get one hundred fifteen. The only thing that I was concerned about, and there's two or three things, was is is one I didn't like the idea of paying prevailing wage. But if it's federal highway, it's a federal grant. I, that becomes a moot point. I, it's either you do prevailing wage or you don't get the grant. So uh, I mean, whether I like it or not, that's that's the way it is. My only other point would being is is that we've mapped out several areas. Mm -hmm. One is going down to the boat ramp. One is downtown Hartford. One is going up uh, Walnut Street up to Clay, uh, Clay, and then back around. Um, I'll make it clear. I'm not going to. I will abstain on any voting on, sure. on 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 Main Street because I own property on Main Street. So I'm not going to vote at all on right. any doing blacktopping. I will abstain. Uh, Mr. Uh, Raymond made a, a very valid statement the other night, yes, we have some problems with sidewalks in downtown Hartford. One of them being in front of Steve Gary's building. One of them is in the, close to the lot that we're talking about, uh, uh, black topping and the wall fixing. Right. Uh, we could jackhammer up and, and patch that. Could we do more black top work or is the grant required that we do some of it on 231? Well, we bid it. They'll want, I would think, to, to have a you know, a a continuous area to do. Okay. You know, once you get started here, jackhammer and hauling off, I don't think they would want to do piecemeal here, piecemeal there. You okay. know, I think the continuity, keeping the same level of concrete throughout, you know. I was just sitting there thinking, Yeah. we don't have sidewalks going down Walnut. Right. And th there's other areas that appear to be worse. Right. But I understand what you're talking about, the con continuity of service. What we've tried to do, I think, in sorting out which ones, which pro parts of the project we want to do now. See, I don't think this precludes us from reapplying, you know, we Again. deem it necessary to finish the project next year and put in Walnut Street or put in uh, the side of Union Street that we're not doing because of, you know, where it requires a retaining wall or whatever. You know, we. And according to the engineers and the the people at the uh, grant office, that actually puts us in a higher acceptability to them to have a project already started and get another grant to finish th that project. So, uh, did that did that one gentleman that contacted me about bidding it? Did he come in and 
to pick up a packet and bid it? No, and we'll have to rebid everything. You know, we'll have to rebid this modified project now. Okay. Uh, so you never heard anything from me? No. Can't contact us. Yeah, just curious. But I just, you know, I just look, I'm looking for some direction. I just want to make sure we're all on the same page, understanding, you know, the, the positives and the negatives of, if you've got any questions, I'll try to answer them, but, you know, as best I can. But, um, in fact, if we could rebid it now, we could probably have the time frame would be like maybe in six weeks we could actually get some work started and work up maybe until the first of December and get part of the project already done this year and then finish it after weather breaks in the spring. So the modified, can you describe again where the modified areas are? I can work? get you a picture and show that to you. This picture speaks a thousand words. I don't know the one I saw, it spent, spoke a lot more than that. I couldn't figure out nothing on it. <laughs> The sidewalk in front of my office area and then down by the bank, it's good there, but that part right in between there. It's pretty bad. It's real bad. And it's been bad for years. Cause well, if you'll notice, there's even some blacktop patch that's been thrown in a couple of holes. Yeah, it's been patched several times, yeah. I think. Hey, um, what we have here is, of course, Union, Union Street from the from the uh, lift station down the last thing going out of town mm -hmm. all just that one side all the way up to the consignment shop it doesn't take we're in, not going to do that corner no that that is an 20 some odd thousand dollars thirty thousand dollars that's understand. extremely uh expensive endeavor yeah, it is there and then we're going to do the opposite side of main street from um the corner here where the gas station, old gas station is, mm -hmm. all the way down to Charlie's Market, put in a sidewalk there. And then we're doing Union Street from Apple Alley all the way up to Clay Street. Is that side worse than this side? This side is much more expensive to do. Yeah. So you got a retaining wall there at the yeah. church. And, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's Plus, bad, getting in bad shape too. Though. Yeah, that whole block is, that block behind the church all the way over to Apple Alley is, is uh, all that retaining wall has got to be replaced. Okay, so is this Main Street here? This Main Street there. And so it'll be... Starting in front of his building? Uh, yeah, in front of his building all the way to Washington Street. Which is the old citizens, the old Commonwealth Community Bank. Yeah, yeah. Is it going on this side too? That's yellow too. That's. Does it go on up there um, in front of the lot? That, yeah, it's, it's part of that. that yeah, that's that's this. See how it's divided off in these little blocks like this. That's uh -huh. different uh, parts of the of the uh, project, and it gets that whole side right there. So, does our engineers think that redoing it like this and with prevailing wage, that we're within the ballpark of what our grant is? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think we have a choice. They have it broken down. They actually have it broken down, and actually within these sections, uh, within this whole project section right here, they've got it broken down into this part costs so much, this part costs so much. I mean, they've got it broken down, and what they've tried to do is maximize our grant right now with with this was Trail Town purpose right here, redoing this. Okay, this to me is beautifying downtown. Mm -hmm. This is, there's a lot of foot traffic from both Mulberry Core Departments and River Bend that uses this sidewalk down mm -hmm. to town. Um, this connects us back with a safe school project that we had that starts right here, you know, and goes on out to the Wayland. That safe school project ended right here at Clay Street. Okay. Anyway, that's what, what we can, of course, right here, going down this side of of uh, Main Street, there is no sidewalk there. Mm -hmm. But I, I know that there's plans for development here. You know, they're moving that old. Uh, the the where uh, Angela's Paul Plant yeah, is. Yeah, they're moving that, and they got plans, I think, for some development of that into like a strip mall there or something. Yeah. I believe. So would a black new driveway or a new sidewalk be laid across in front of uh, Marty's parking lot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. But I just, 
you know. Uh, Take up that old brick sidewalk over there. But the engineer just wanted to know, you know, whether we, how we want to proceed. Do we want to go ahead with the project as it's modified, or do we want to tell the grant people to return the money back in? So I'd like to know, you know, you can't vote on it. You I'm won't not vote on I'm it. I'm not going to vote on it. You probably won't vote on it either because it affects you. We've only got two other votes, so. Well, we can help vote then. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you can you can make a motion and y'all can vote on it, and we can poll the other two members, uh, present them with that option to see whether they're in favor of it or not, and if there is a majority then we can proceed and if there's not then we'll just could we vote on the other parts and just leave that main street out <laughs> i just think it would be inappropriate for you oh, yeah. he owns one building i own two yeah. it's going to be affected by it i agree you're just requesting bids. well i'll make the motion that we go for it okay is there a second to that i'll second it all right to take bids mm -hmm. To accept bids? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, rebid the project as right. modified. Any discussion? All those who are in favor of it? All those opposed? All those who abstain? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item of business. Thank you. I believe, it, in my opinion, talking with the engineer, I believe that's the wise, wise way to go. Um, Last time there was a question about um, See that uh, the Beaver Dam's premise and life that we have, we start off a, a new recruit at $12. And uh, that usually lasts approximately a year until they can get their academy and get their time in, things like that. Uh, Beaver Dam does the same thing at $12.50 as their recruit pay. Uh, Calhoun Island, Livermore, Sacramento don't have police departments. They use their county and state. Uh, well, they use the sheriff's department there and state if they have to. Forestville uses the county and state. They don't have a police department. Hartsburg, um, they've only got one police officer. And you see, they didn't get paid very much, and they use their county and state as well. Lewisport only has, I believe they've only got one officer too. Um, and at night they'll use their county and state uh, to answer calls. A new, a new certified starting out would be $15. Litchfield's from 1217. Caneyville's only got one. He's been with them 27 years, so they couldn't tell me Hmm. what the range was because that'd be his <laughs> what he makes pretty much he's high and low man on total yeah. yeah well see the same thing is true up at Orangeburg I was surprised that they only had one and um Lewisport they don't have but they've got very few if they have any I think it's maybe two uh Morgantown you see there's Central Cities and Greenville so you can compare what we pay to. I think the very least we need to do, we need to be exactly what Beaver Dam is. Over the years, we've hired people, we've trained them, we've sent them to the academy, they come back, they go, they work for six months and go to Beaver Dam. If we can just mirror, minimum, mirror image of what Beaver Dam is, and then it'll give us time as we go through the rest of the personnel policy and we can do more evaluation. But I think the, I think the least we can do is raise, if we're talking about time and grade, Right. If we're talking about both time and grade, if we're looking at both that, 
The least we need to do is get Hartford and Beaver Dam equal on that. Fact. I think I think yeah. that way we're not our most our most competitive location we got is Beaver Dam. Right. So uh, if we can if we can at least do that, um, I think then that gives us time to uh, make an evaluation. Do we need to be even more competitive than that? The thing about uh, we've never had well haven't for a long time had to send a recruit to the academy. Mm -hmm. Right now it's looking like you know uh, that's the only prospect we can have if we can find someone. I thought you got an application not too long ago. Well they were that it was a good application except right now we don't pay hazardous duty pay and that's what they were looking for because that's what they've got now as a park ranger they have hazardous duty pay. And Does Beaver Dam pay hazardous duty? Uh, Thanks. So. They, you think they do? Mm -hmm. Okay. I really think they're the only one around that does it. So what's that cost? It has to do with your workers' call rates. And their workers' comp rates are higher than ours or lower than ours? Ours is a lot lower because our police officers are not hazardous. They're hmm. not hazardous. The determination was made many years ago. So then even if we raise the hourly rate, uh, what, what I don't I, I mean I know what hazardous duty is. How does that come into the picture? I don't fully understand it. Uh, the only way I know it impacts is through your workers comp. Workers doesn't comp. raise your pay; it just raises your insurance. Your workers comp rates will about double for police officers. But but that's not based upon what George just said. There's got to be something more to it. That he was work. He's a park ranger. Mm -hmm. but now it might it might affect the retirement. Because hazardous duty, uh, non-hazardous duty is 27 years retirement. Hazardous duty used to be 20. Right. Am I wrong? Do does anybody know about that? Does anybody they know do, about that? It does affect the retirement. It does, does. It does affect the retirement. For example, if you're not hazardous duty, you can retire after 27 years. If you're hazardous duty, you can retire after 20 years. Right. That's Plus, they also that's also counted in there. You know, they revamped how they do the top three. But you get somebody that's wanting to come in and retire or work for the last five or ten years, and you aren't paying hazardous duty, that's going to hurt getting somebody. No. So that greatly affects the retirement. That's so. I mean, I don't think it's it's not real money in their pocket right now. It's money in their pocket. Well, yeah. yeah. Is it really? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plus uh, the no retirement fee. Yeah. But that's one that's one reason that he turned down the application. Well, I mean, obviously yeah. that's. I mean, I'll still say that I think for right now, we need on the hourly rates need to be equivalent to what Beaver Dam is. And I think we need to at least look at about the hazardous duty. I don't think we, any of us have enough information to make that type of decision right now. How about if we just present that at the regular schedule meeting, you know, in two weeks? What's that? The, all the implications of what hazardous duty is going to mean to us. But I, think, but I do think we can go ahead and make a change on this other because I do think that we've got an offer, we've got a position we need to fill and we, the quicker we can make that change, yeah. the better off we are having a chance, at least a chance of getting a well, the ones, the ones that we're going to fill is going to be down at the lower end of, of the scale there, you know. Um, and they'll still fall under these labor rates because that was what was passed in 2017 until we, until we update our Personnel policy. Our pay, no, or our, pay, our pay rates. Pay rates. I'm hoping whenever we do redo our handbook that we come up with a a pay scale that has all the classifications, certifications of operators, employees, whatever, and also has a time so that if somebody comes in and they're a class two or class three water plant operator with 10 years experience, it's, I can just go right to it and say, here's what you're going to learn. And I agree. I just think that we can make this one change and we could potentially make this one change tonight and even if two months from now, if we need to make another change, we can, but we are trying to fill a position right now and 50 cents an hour, I'm sorry, it's $1,040 a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know. Uh, we, well, had, we had one who thought he wanted to be a recruit, you know, and go through the training and everything. But, you know, for, you know, what, $500 a, 
a week or something like that. He didn't feel like he could. Mm -hmm. well, I mean, I'd like to make a motion that we mirror image our pay rate and scale to what Beaver Dams is based on the information we have and we can look at and we can have information presented at the next council meeting about hazardous duty and we can make a decision from that. What, what position? For the, for the police. For police chief, police assistant, well, all, assistant sergeant. For any, we, we, need, we need to do it, well, particularly for the, um, help me here, George, to mm -hmm. make sure I understand this. That, 12 is a recruit. Six, that's a recruit. That's what the, we paid. Somebody just come. The twelve dollars and the twelve fifty is what we need. To, those are recruit. We need to mirror image what Beaver Dam's recruit is. Okay. And the sixteen oh five is what. That's where uh, right now our lowest pay paid employee is working right now, and that's with what about uh, was it five six years with us eight years I can't remember what. How long it's been, but but as a certified uh, police officer with uh, five years' experience, let's say that's what that's what we're paying right now. I understand. Okay, we've got a we've got a salary schedule there, but so I, I don't know how you can match it well, unless you have a salary. I, I understand. But what I was getting ready to say is we had a discussion. The other night, some of us did mm -hmm. outside the uh, city hall with one of our officers, and um, their position they felt like currently was adequate on compensation. Okay, and that was the chief. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other ones are a little bit under what Beaver Dam is. Um, and it, you know they're not going to get into. Who's making what over there? So I, I really can't answer that. I, I mean, I, they wouldn't give me that information. To be honest, but their officer with 10 years' experience is making, you know, they, uh, they might ask for their pay scale. Just, just a minute. Just a minute. See, I don't. I don't know if their chief is making all the way up to the top of their scale. Yeah, they may not be. Is our essentially twenty one ninety three? Yeah. Essentially, if we if we raised the base salary twelve dollars to twelve fifty, mm -hmm. and raise everybody accordingly except the chief four mm percent. -hmm. It's giving everybody the same incremental raise, percentage-wise. Now we've just given them a raise. I'm not worried. But that's not the part I'm concerned about. Okay. I'm worried about being competitive in the marketplace. Okay. That's, I think there's two different things we're talking about here. Okay. If I gave you a $10 raise and I've still got you $30 below what the market is, I, that's not enough. Does that make sense? Uh, and then I'm not saying that we don't look at the police chief, but I'm just saying right now the, the positions we've got to fill in, or maintaining and keeping would be in grade. So, you know, if we raise the 12 to 12.50 and we raise everybody except the chief accordingly 4%, then that would be, does that make sense? So we raise everybody yeah. to the 4% or whatever grade they're in right now by 4%. And then, you know, I mean, and, and uh, were you out there the other night when we had that conversation? Mm -hmm. You were. Yeah. And is that not how you understood it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I'm not trying to leave anybody out, but, but he felt like particularly, and he, admit, he admittedly said that the position here in Hartford has support from the sheriff's department a lot of times that Beaver Dam may not have. Uh, and he, he was generally concerned about his mm -hmm. his officers. Right. I, I mean, yes. you correct me if I'm wrong on anything. Yes. So, um, I mean, I would like to make a motion that that we would, our entry level would be 1250, which is the Beaver Dam. Every other position up to chief, excluding chief at this time, would be a 4% increase. And I'll second the motion. Okay. Any more discussion to the motion? If not, then all in favor of lifted hand. Thank you. Motion carries. All right. Huh? Effective immediately because I want. I, I think we need to yeah. make this competitive in the marketplace as far as part trying to get people in here. Okay. And 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 we're going to have some information to get educated on the 
hazardous duty for the next meeting, right? Okay. Okay, let's move on to the new business then that we're considering tonight. Uh, you see, Fire Chief there, I have to bring a recommendation to you about replacing Dan Wilson, and uh, uh, I'm recommending that we uh, appoint uh, Billy Henderson as the Fire Chief for the Hartford Volunteer Fire Department and receive the same pay that Danny Wilson was getting. Motion? I'll make a motion that we make that change. Okay. Second the motion. Any discussion to it? All in favor? Okay, thank you. Um, okay, and then I also have on here the uh, the tax rate. Um, the hassle every year seems like you know the get our tax rate. Um, we're trying to get grad to give us the rate that we're entitled to uh, compensating rate that'll keep our, at least our level of income at the same rate. Um, they gave us some information, gave us a rate. It wasn't, the, it wasn't right, I don't think. And we've asked her ask them to reconsider and they've not got back with us. Um, I don't know, I just, it's a complicated process that they go through uh, to give us this. Our, our property values have gone up about uh, a little less than $6,000. Six, excuse me, our property values have gone up a little less than six million dollars. Okay, it's hard to say. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Close, something wasn't going right. By <laughs> closing Fred's really right. missed. Sure, sure. <laughs> too, many, too much taxes. Uh, the the tangible or, or that's the, that's the total property. That's including the real property and the tangible property. Has gone up about uh, $6 million from last year. Um, personal property actually has gone down. And, uh, you know, that's, that's everything that... Uh, it's not real property, you know, so we also have a rate for boats and RVs and motorcycles. And, is it motorcycles? It's not motorcycles. It's boats and RVs. Watercraft, aircraft. And aircraft, yeah. And we haven't changed that rate in ever, I don't think. So, I mean, it's only, what, about 20 cents? Something like that. Is that what it is? Okay. Um, last year our property tax rate was 58 cents and the real property we lowered that a couple of years ago. Remember the process we went through where we had to let grad be amazed that we were actually lowering tax rates instead of raising them. Mm -hmm. It's, it's down to 41, I believe, is what our tangible property tax rate is. Uh, the numbers they gave us were 59 for the uh, action. Well, sorry. 50, let me get it here. That's the numbers all over this place. Actually, it's uh, 0.538. And and the rate last year was 0 0.580. So actually, based upon but what what they're telling us is that because we've had an increase of six million dollars for the of property, we don't have to quite charge quite as much to get the same amount of taxes coming in. Yeah. You know, um, that is the compensating rate. That's compensating rate. 
uh, let's see, this year, is this this year? All the red is 15, 16, 17. Real is 55. It was 55 and 48. Okay, so my memory's not too good. It's been that way since 2014. We changed it. Okay, we haven't changed our rates except for the tangible property when we went down from 74, 83, whatever it was, down to 48. So, but um, I want us to look at the tax rate, uh, not, to inc not to necessarily increase it, but if we leave our rate at about the same place that it is now, uh, the increased value would generate us, you know, extra income. Surprisingly enough, not a lot of in increase of income. Um, last year, our revenue was 405000 if we raise it uh, at 5.538, it'll, it'll bring it up to 436000 So it was a gain of about $30,000. Um, the numbers, I mean, you're welcome to look at these. Um, what you're telling us, if we leave the rate the same as it was last year and, well, not, and not take the compensating rate, Compensating rate would decrease people tax bills because we would get the same amount of tax dollars. Yeah. And then we well, would we'd, actually, we'd get, actually get a little bit more tax dollars. We'd actually get no. last year the the real property revenue. Well, let's say okay. Let's look at grand totals. Forget the real property and tangible property. The grand total of 2017 was about 438 thousand dollars. Okay. If we leave, if we set a rate at 0.538, now remember what our rate was, well actually here it says our rate last year was 0.59, I don't believe it was. It was that, that's part of the error, it was in 2014, that, that's why that sheet's incorrect. But, but, okay. but, what I, but what I'm saying is if our values has gone up six million dollars and if they take compensating rate they're going to lower the overall rate to get us the same amount of tax dollars. Yeah. If we leave our rate the exact same thing as it was last year, right. most people will be paying the same tax dollars they're paying last year. It's going to generate us several more dollars in property, property taxes. values went up, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and yeah. It generates more extra dollars. It's not as much as you think it would. It, um, so you, you look at that and see, this is, uh, that's a real property. The rest of this is just personal property, which is... That's formulas, and so that's pulling in correct information all the way down. Say it again. That is formulas that she's using there. Mm -hmm. So that point... Five nine. Five nine is affecting the numbers mm -hmm. down through the spreadsheet, and five nine is incorrect. It should be five five. That's why... I'm Where did you get five nine at? Because it was in 2014, and in, in, in their behalf, that was probably, that's the last time that they actually calculated that for us because We've we haven't asked it. them to do it because we lowered our rate and we wanted it to stay the same for 15, 16, and 17. And at that time, we, we knew that we would have a decrease of about thirty dollars to $35,000 from 14 to 15. But in this case, if we keep the rate the same rate as it was last year, we'll be generating more revenue. Mm. Yes. Because our property values went up. Right. So you're making more money and you're not raising taxes? Is that not what I'm hearing? Not on tax rate. I mean, I think that's the thing to do. I just don't know how we can raise them. I, don't either. I would rather us, though, have some numbers there that are more correct and not based on 2014 before we make, you know, a decision. Well, how quick can you get those? Well, we've... We're we've asked, now, uh, we called, uh, we. You talking to Brad Edley? Edley? No, What's his name? Brad Alley. No, Brad this, Alley? Is, this is somebody else. Brad not there anymore? Yeah, he is. He's he doing the grant. Do that. Oh. He's doing grant rather than taxes. He does the grants, yeah. But anyway, I just want 
wants to start to think about uh, our tax rate and uh, I mean if we don't raise taxes if we just charge the same rate right. it'll generate more revenue and the tax rate didn't get increased and and we're not taking the compensating rate because the compensated rate would actually be lower right because we had an increase of property values then we'll generate get, we'll generate more revenue the tax the, the tax percentage is the same as it was last year and we didn't raise taxes tax yeah. not I mean you know the residents didn't right. get a, a tax didn't raise increase the rate. So we didn't Their raise the rate taxes taxes well I mean you know if your good. property improved in its PVA I mean we don't do that yeah we blame Jason for that but, I mean they even give you a four percent you know, four percent is a level. If you raise your rate four percent, you have to have Subject public hearings and things yeah. like that. You know. Yes. Uh, but anyway, I, hopefully by our next meeting that we'll have some more realistic. Well, if nothing else, you can put the point. You can put that number in there and calculate it yourself, can't you? That's what I'm asking. Do you have that sheet? Hey, her math is not. <laughs> She had a lousy math teacher. In the <laughs> George, aren't you a math teacher or what? I was her math teacher in seventh eighth grade. Oh, no. <laughs> so that's what's wrong with your math? <laughs> I learned how to make my A's correct. I bet you did. <laughs> but he did the same way I did in the eighth grade, but he didn't get in trouble for it. <laughs> Don't do as I do, do as I say. But anyway. Uh, so you did point five eight. is that what you're saying it should be? Uh, that's the current rate is point five five is the current rate. It's been that since two thousand fifteen. That's your twenty seventeen then real value revenue. Um look on there, they've got okay oh, there's you do that. Here's the grand total of 2017 revenue. That for, for includes, all your different rates. Like, yeah. yeah, but that includes tangible as well as real. It includes your real property but and that, your but that's personal that. property. So really, just add an extra thirty thousand on there. But that so. Be four hundred eight thousand. Yeah. So that's what you would be looking at as revenue. Okay. Uh, Here's the 2017 review right there. Well, I adjusted it though. So, so technically, your 2017 revenue adjusted for that rate would have been that number, so 408. Okay, here's the 2018 anticipated. See the grand total? Okay. Total of 2018. What we'll try to do is have some different, uh, different rates available for you. To look at so that you can see what you want to decide to do based on how much it'll generate and what's reasonable for the people to pay. Okay. All right. That's all the items that we've got uh, on the agenda. Uh, informational. I still have. I need to send this in about the grad dinner. If you're if you want to go to that dinner, it's on the 21st at the Old Burke Convention Center. Uh, it's their 50th year celebration, so it's going to be a big hoop to do. Uh, reception's at 6, dinner's at 7, dress the semi form. If you want to go, make sure I get your name on the card. I'm going to send in first the next week. Okay. Um, All I've got to you, you got something quick. Nothing it's I not, got. You're on there, but. I don't, but I, I don't think I have anything for Okay. It. All right, then. If there's nothing else, then. Well, uh, the only thing, and, and, I'm, and I'll have Tara correct me if I can't bring it up, the, I want to reiterate publicly that we have Viola coming in and talking to our employees and looking at the things. I, I, I do not want our employees to be scared. Right. We've not entered in any contract nor did I even understand that we had asked for that degree of evaluation. Uh, but, I, I, you know, so uh, uh, we are concerned about our general welfare of our employees as well as the residents of Hartford. Right. And we want to make sure that we don't have uh, instill any fear in our employees. Uh, 
they've come in and they've asked them um, just a un unreal number of questions. And then they've done that in order to be able to give us fairly uh, a good accounting of what it's going to cost us if we use them. Okay. I mean, they can't just say, come in and say, look at it and say, oh, yeah, we can do this, this, and this. But they had, they were looking at every aspect of our production, of, of our employees, you know, our relationship with them, our benefits, uh, pay scale, everything. They've looked at everything there. They've, they've looked at uh, reports of what our plant has produced. Uh, uh, they've looked at uh, all, all of our uh, lines, you know, how many hybrids have we got, how big are the lines, where are they. So they're looking at just every aspect in order to give us the best as the best educated, you know. Uh, but I was a little thing. concerned. I think they brought in they brought in their own personnel man manuals, and they're bringing HR in to talk to staff. I, I well, didn't know that that, would, that. What part is that germane to what, making evaluation to tell us what they could charge what, us? What I asked them to do was there were a lot of questions that our employees had. They had a bunch of questions that they want answered. You know, like what about uh, what's our pay going? You know, what's it going to do to our pay scale? What about our job security? What's going to happen with our retirement? And I want them to hear from their HR people, this is what we do. I, I want their questions answered. I don't want rumors floating around because I want the employees to be informed enough to know, yeah, I'm for this or no, I'm not for this, you know. And I think the only way they can do that is to bring, they can't ask, ask me the questions because I don't know. I know what propaganda they give me, you know, what sheets and their benefit package and stuff like that, but the employees need to ask the questions that they're most concerned with from, and get it from the horse's mouth, you know, and that's one reason I asked them, suggested that they come in and let our employees meet with them and just, you know, I just patient. think that there's a level of anxiety on our employee staff. I know there is, and there, would, and there should be, you know, because this is totally unknown. And uh, I'm not saying I'm for them. I'm not saying I'm against them. I'm just saying we need to make we need to make a decision from an informed stand, standpoint, and that needs to be with input from the employees, with input from interested citizens, with you know, all the input that we can get before we make a decision, you know. Because they're going to come in and make a presentation that makes them sound like, you know, mom, God, and apple pie, you know, that a la mode, you know, that they're, and they may be. I'm just saying we need to, to ask questions. We need to be as well informed as we can be before they, uh, and that's what they're trying to do with all spending so much time here is they want to be able to give us their best figure for what it's going to cost us you know and i'm not saying i'm you know i'm not saying i'm for them i'm not saying i'm against them i'm just saying i want to be informed and i want input from every possible source as to uh what i should you know what decision i would like to make about it you know so um you know, they can take me out to eat three times a week if they wanted to, you know. That still doesn't change the fact that I want, I want to make the best decision possible for everybody involved. And I think everybody around this table wants to do the same thing. I just... I know, I've heard, I've, I've, I've told, I've told David Wakefield, you know, the guy who's been kind of the, uh, the ramrod of this, you know, he's the district manager. I told him, I said, I'm going to be honest with you, our, our council has said over and over again that we're going to do what's best for the employees, what's best for the citizens, you know, we're going to uh, take a close look at this to make sure we, everybody's treated right, you know. I'm genuinely. Here you come. Yes, um, now tell me what our motion was that 
Oh, the sidewalk project. Uh, we had a motion that was passed with two people, but it's not enough, you know, to act on. These two have abstained. It's about a uh, sidewalk project. Okay. Rebidding it in a, as a modified project mm -hmm. using up our. Coming down. This is 69. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. This is over into. This is downtown Main Street going from in front of his business up here to probably the lot or the other side of Old Commonwealth Community Bank. And then this is on the opposite side of 69 going down toward the school board. Toward Clay Street, yeah. Okay, Clay Street. And these are the worst areas of our sidewalks? That They're the most bang for our buck right now. Okay. Each section on there has been the uh, contractor came in with sat down with the engineer and said, "Okay, this section right here would have, would have cost us forty-two thousand dollars. This section would have cost us thirty-five thousand. This section right here, we figured it would cost us sixty thousand. This one right here was twenty-one thousand. And what they've done is they've sat down and tried to get the most amount of sidewalk for what we what grant for we the, have what available. The bid. Yeah. Okay." All right. We have approximately six hundred and seventy-five, eighty thousand dollars grant. Okay. We we it cost us one hundred fifteen thousand of that. I will say that I'm telling you wrong. Okay. The total project is six eighty. Our part of it's one fifteen, so it's like five hundred and sixty thousand dollars. Is what our grant actually is. Right. It's a it's a twenty percent. We were right. twenty percent of that. Checking so. his math here. Huh? You're checking your math there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do, uh, so, uh, but it couldn't pass because just two people voted. And they had to abstain we were because going of to the call location of the and sidewalks. Poll, because poll we were other people. Under. So I'm giving you a chance now to either vote yes or no. Okay. Yeah. Why I vote you, yes. Why okay. Why don't you read the motion? Just. Okay. The motion is to rebid the project. You want to rebid? Well, you want to? Do you want, yeah, do you want, to, do you want us to redo just a motion? Yeah. Okay. Um, make do a motion that we. Do you want to redo it the same way? Either way, just. Okay. Yeah, I make the motion. <laughs> read what motion read. he made. To accept the bids on the sidewalk project. Right. To accept bids on the sidewalk. Project. Yeah. Okay. I'll second it. It should be to rebid the project right, right. now. We can accept. Do we know what the bids are? Right. This is way too complicated. <laughs> I'll second it. Well. Yeah. It should be to rebid the project because yeah, based upon this drawing, right? Yes, so that's my motion. That's yeah, Mr. Right. I second that motion. Okay. Okay. All in favor? Thank you. Abstain? Thank you. All right. Anybody else have anything? Move we adjourn. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. That'll All in favor of adjourning? <laughs> Aren't you guys glad I